thank you, Jesus. If we could just stand together. Amen. And let's clap our hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Anything is possible. Hallelujah. We're going to believe every word in this song. Crush this. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's keep that going for just a moment right now. Come on, hallelujah, anything is possible. Come on, why don't you just open up your mouth and declare that anything is possible. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. All of my fears. Hallelujah. what I feel in the Lord today. I like what the Lord is already doing in our midst today. Amen. Thankful for freedom. Amen. That's freedom, isn't it? Amen. Liberty and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you for what we feel. We thank you, God, how you're moving on lives right now. We thank you for a touch of your spirit today, Lord. Thank you for visiting your people once again, Lord. Thank you for meeting our prayer and our praise today, Jesus. Amen, amen. And if you love the Lord, just put your hands together if you're able right now. Hallelujah. Amen. It just, it just feels right when we uplift the King of kings and the Lord of lords today because he is the king. He deserves everything we can give him. Amen. Why don't you turn to your friend right now that's right next to you, the person that's maybe beside you, and shake their hand, give them a high five, hug them, smile at them. We're going to take a few moments here at New Life Church, and I want you to, if you would like to, just move around in the congregation and go and talk with a few people. Let's visit for just a few moments today. Let's take just a moment and visit with one another, greet each other. Friendship and fellowship, nothing like it, nothing like it. You may be seated at this time, and we want to go on record that if you are a guest here today, your first time visiting New Life Church, we want you 
to feel welcome. We want you to feel the love of God and the body of Christ. New Life Church, let's welcome any guests that may be here today visiting with us. We're so glad you're here. We're so glad you're here. And uh, if this is your first time to be with us, we do want to encourage you to find one of our Connect cards. Uh, one of our members can help you find this, but it's located in the foyer. And if you're a guest, we would request that you fill out this form and just share with us as much information as you feel comfortable doing so. Uh, that is so that we can get you plugged into the ministries and involvement here at New Life Church and give everybody an opportunity to be involved in what God is doing. Isn't God doing some wonderful things? He certainly is. He certainly is. And today, I, I am pleased to remind you that we have a Spanish ministry fundraiser that will be taking place at the conclusion of today's service. You might have caught, caught a, a whiff or smell of the, the goodness that is being cooked downstairs. I know I did. I had to remind myself I got to go to church. I wanted to stay down there. Amen. But the meal today will consist of Mexican chicken, rice, beans, and tortillas. It is a $15 charge per plate. Again, this is a fundraiser for the Spanish ministry of New Life Church. If you would like to join us for this meal, you're welcome to come to the lower level, the basement of the church, immediately following this service. If you do not have time, maybe you have to go to work or you have to go to the golf course. Amen. As soon as church ends, we have to-go plates. We have you in mind as well. Amen. And then just a reminder, we are so thankful for how you all honored the Fleming family a few weeks ago. But just a reminder, if you would like to show monetary appreciation for all of their years of service, you may do so by giving in the offering until October 30th and just designating your offering as the Fleming family gift. And today, while we are in the vein of announcements, uh, we do have a very special announcement to make concerning the Allwart family. Amen. Don't you just love the Allwarts? They're wonderful people. They're assistant pastors here at New Life Church, brother and sister Allwart. Amen. They're a wonderful family. But you may or may not know this, but since 2013, uh, brother Jeremiah and sister Jen have felt a call to the nation of Iceland. And so through the years, they have carefully planned and they've worked to raise the funds necessary that will enable them to serve as missionaries for a short time in the nation of Iceland. And at this time, I've asked Brother Allwart to come and he wants to share with you some very special news and a very important update concerning their work there in Iceland. Brother Allwart. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I have written here, and I'm just going to read from it, but Dear New Life Church family, Jennifer, Joelle, and I have an exciting update to share with all of you, and it is, beginning October 7th, we will embark on a three-month missionary journey to Iceland. We understand this mission trip comes during a time of transition in our church, but we are deeply grateful for your understanding and your support. We will return back to Ames in early January 2025, and it is with a heart full of excitement and faith that we start this journey, knowing that since 2013, God has prepared this mission for us. During our time in Iceland, we ask for your prayers, for safety, wisdom, and discernment as we serve God's purpose for his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Exciting, exciting news. We're so thankful to see that call that has been put in place for many years now starting to come to light. And I just want to share with you that Sunday, September 29th, will be the Allworts' last Sunday with us before they embark on the short-term mission trip. Uh, but we will have focus and special prayer for them before they depart. But for the time being, please let them know that you'll be supporting them. And of course, we pledge to cover them in prayer as they prepare to answer the call of God on their lives. And we do, we do appreciate this wonderful family, and we look forward to all that God is going to do through them there in Iceland. Well, now that we have covered announcements, we are coming to another place in the service where we get to worship the Lord, and that is through our giving. And we have our ushers preparing to come and receive this morning's offering. 
If you're a guest, there is absolutely no pressure for you to give in this offering. There's no pressure for anyone. But this is just part of our worship that we bring to the Lord. We bring our sacrifice of praise, our sacrifice of a monetary gift. And we just want to give you the opportunity to participate. And whether you do that or not, I wonder if you would just bow your heads with me right now as we pray over this offering. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day, for the worship. God, for the incredible news that we have just shared with the church. And Lord, we ask that you would bless this offering that we're about to receive. God, I pray that you bless those who are able to give, those who are not. God, we know that you're able to press it down, shake it together, and make it overflow. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. I wonder if you could clap your hands one more time to the Lord as we enter another season of worship.
There's a something about the name of Jesus. And so we're going to stand and proclaim his name. Hallelujah. His name is as ointment. His name, hallelujah, is above every other name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
could have been up here this morning but I just want to thank God that name heals all that name delivers all and I believed every word of these songs that we are singing this morning and I believe that he has touched my body he has touched my body and maybe if you're here this morning and you don't believe that Jesus still heals I want you to remember that he heals. Amen. God bless you, everybody. In Jesus' name. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's just lift our hands, close our eyes right now, and let's just speak that name over every situation. Hallelujah. We speak the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you need healing today, speak the name of Jesus over that. In Jesus' name, by his stripes we're healed. If you're faced with an impossible situation or circumstance of life today, just speak the name of Jesus over it right now. Amen. If you don't know what to do, you don't know what to say, you don't know where to go, there is a name in this room right now. There is a name above every name. Come on, he has given him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. There is just something about the name of Jesus. There's something about that name. Amen. Amen. Matters not if you are in a hospital room in the middle of an impossible situation. I've seen and you've seen, when we speak the name of Jesus, he can turn it around. It doesn't matter if you're traveling in a vehicle and that vehicle goes out of control or you're about to enter into a collision with another vehicle. If you speak the name of Jesus, I've seen the Lord reach down and do a miraculous swerve and bring, it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter how big, it doesn't matter how small. The name of Jesus is up to the task today. It's up to the task, and I'm so thankful for that, as I know you are. Amen. Such a sweet presence of the Lord in this church service today. Thank you for being here and being a part of New Life Church. And I know my family and I are still learning names and faces, uh, but I am thrilled at what the Lord is doing in this church and in the lives that are connected with this church. Look around this room today at all these testimonies. Amen. All of these living, breathing witnesses that the Lord is faithful. That the Lord can do anything. Somebody say amen. We'll be going to 1 Samuel chapter 11 in our reading today. 1 Samuel chapter 11. And as you're turning there, I would like to also honor... Pastor Flores, who is with us today from Denison. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, for being here. We honor you, honor your ministry. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. We come upon a city of Israel that is facing an impossible situation because they're about to be invaded by an enemy. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 reads, The Nahash, the Ammonite, came up, and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us. Make a deal with us. Spare our city, they were saying, and we will serve you. Verse 2, And Nahash the Ammonite, he replies this, On this condition will I let you live. On this condition will I make a covenant with you, he was saying. 
that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for reproach upon all Israel. Verse 4, then they sent messengers. This is where we learn that they sent messengers to the king of Israel. Then came messengers to Gibeah of Saul and told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and they wept. They were in an impossible situation. An enemy had showed up and was telling them what they were about to do if they wanted to survive. They had to give them something. They had to give over their right eye. It's not a good situation, is it? It's very bleak. Verse 9, but the good king, King Saul, hears about this and he sends his word to the city. He says, I want you to go, messengers, and I want you to take this message to that city and let them know that the king has heard their cry. The king has heard about their situation and I'm about to deliver you out of that ordeal. Verse 9, and they said unto the messengers that came, as they came to the city, thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead that tomorrow, by that time the sun be hot, you will have help. And the messengers came and showed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Why? Because they had received the word of the king, and the word of the king told them, you will have the help that you need. Today I want to preach by the help of the Holy Ghost about the word of the king. That when the word of the king comes to you, it does not matter how dark it is. It does not matter how long you've been praying about it. But when the word comes to you, there is deliverance. There is a miracle. There is an instance where God can totally turn everything around just by the word of the king. Let's pray one more time. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence Thank you for your people that are here today. And God, I am asking that you would continue to visit with us in the next few moments. And now, God, you would speak to us through your word. Your word is timeless, and your word is quick, and it's more powerful than any two-edged sword. So I pray that that word would be here today, and it would operate. God, I pray that walls and barriers that may be up right now would just be neutralized and brought low in your presence, God, so that you can perform a heart surgery, and you can turn somebody's life around and you can fill them with your spirit. They may be baptized in your name before this service is over. And everybody said, in the name of Jesus, God bless you. You may be seated. The word of the king. It was quite a few years ago in 1978 that our government, the United States government, approached a sound company with a unique proposal. They wanted this sound company to develop a technology that would allow their aircraft pilots and astronauts to be able to communicate and hear clearly the ground crews and other pilots around them, even if they were in a cockpit with a piston-driven engine and maybe they were strapped in a rocket ship and they were going to the moon uh, even in those contexts and situations, they wanted their pilots to be able to hear clearly the ground command and the ground control's instructions. They had this problem. They said, can you help us? And so this technology company, this was the late 70s, started working on this problem. And gradually, they began to create and invent something that had never really been there before. They came up with this technology known as noise-canceling technology, noise-canceling technology. Now, I've got a slide coming up. You, you may be very familiar with this reference, and we live every day of our lives probably using noise-canceling technology because we now use it in our AirPods and earbuds. How many of you have some AirPods and earbuds that you use? How many of you like to use those earbuds and AirPods when you want to just drown out the noise around you? Yeah, that's noise-canceling technology. And there was a time where it didn't exist, but now it does, and we kind of just take it for granted. But it really is a gift. It really is a gift because noise-canceling technology enables the user to drown out the noise around them, and it allows the user to focus on the sounds and the instructions and the words that they need to hear and they want to hear. Because just like driving an aircraft in the air, you and I live in a very noisy world, don't we? 
Oh, we live in a very noisy environment where there's a lot of messages and there's a lot of sounds and there's a lot of distractions. And we know that if we want to be successful in life, that there must come a time where we decide that we're no longer going to focus on the distractive noise, that we're not going to get pulled aside by the distractions of life, that we can hear all of the calamity and the chaos around us, but we come to a point where we decide that if we're going to be successful in this journey and we're going to be successful in life, then we have to be able to focus on the things that matter and shut out the things that do not matter. We've got to be able to determine what voices we should hear and what voices we should not hear. And I want to tell you today that noise-canceling technology is a wonderful, wonderful thing in the natural realm. But I want to tell you in the spiritual realm that there needs to be an ability that comes to the people of God and to the people who are trying to get close to God, that you have to be able to look around you and say this is a noisy, wild, crazy, loud world. And I'm hearing voices in my ears, and I'm hearing sounds coming to me, and I'm getting messages every single day that come through my brain and come through my thoughts. And you've got to come to a place where you decide that while I can hear all the noise of what the world is saying, and I can hear all the sounds, and the voices of men and women around me, I've got to focus on one voice. I've got to focus on a singular voice. I got to be able to open my ears and open my heart and open my spirit because I want to hear today the word of the king. Oh, I've come to tell you today that the most important word that we can hear is the word, the word of a king. We live in a world today where they tell me that the average person receives over 3,000, 3,000 different advertisements or messages in one single day. 3,000 different voices, 3,000 different voices coming at you and I in one single day. That means that if you are just an average user of media, if you're just an average user or reader of news and media, an average user of social media, you're getting over 3,000 different messages that are bombarding your spirit and your thoughts and your mind. Now, how many of you know that those thoughts and those messages are not always positive? Oh, they're not always uplifting, are they? They're not always encouraging, are they? No, they come at us and they distract us and they tell us that we're inferior. They tell our young ladies that they're not beautiful because they don't look this certain way. And they tell our young men that they're not really masculine or men unless they do a certain thing or if they live a certain lifestyle that lends itself to immorality. And they tell you and I that the house that we have and the car that we drive is never enough and it's never good enough. And they tell us that we're not making it and we're not successful. We've got all of this noise going on around us. I'm preaching to somebody today in the middle of all of that. The enemy gets in the middle of all of those messages. Oh, he rides on the streamline of media messages. And sometimes he plants a seed. And it takes a while for the seed to grow. But you find yourself months or maybe years later living out a seed that was planted by the voice that you allowed into your life. Can I just tell you today, it's important that we know the voices that are speaking into our life. Not just every person who says they have good intentions really does have good intentions for you and your family. You've got to filter it through the Word of God. This is the filter. This is how I know. Is this good? Is this bad? Is this truth? Is this a lie? Is this light? Is this darkness? I want to tell you, the Word of the Lord will never fail you. This has to be the filter. This has has to be the settled thing. This has to be the ultimate authority. This has to be the word that I hear and tells me who I am and where I am going. But the, the enemy, he's, he's a master at what he does and he gets involved and he gets in our mind and he gets in our thoughts and, and 
if he can control our thoughts and begin to bend our thoughts a certain way, then he can control our emotions. And some of us trust our emotions so much. I'm not saying that you should not listen to your emotions and feel that. But some of us trust our emotions so much that sometimes we misidentify the plan and the will and the path of God because it does not feel a certain way. Can I tell you, when you can't trust your feelings, you've got to just trust the word of God. When you can't trust the opinion of man around you, you just got to trust the word of God. When you can't trust the, the opinion of all the voices that you have in your life and the friends that may be around you and they're pulling you out of the church or maybe they're pulling you away from God, I want to tell you, you got to look at this world and say, I love you, but you're not going to pull me down. I've got a word and thy word, O oh Lord, is settled forever. No, it's settled forever. I'm not going that way. I'm not going to darkness. I'm not going to be deceived. I'm not going to go unrighteous life's uh, an unrighteous direction. Why? Because I can hear a sound. I can hear a word, and it's the word of the king. And his word trumps all the other words. His word trumps the voice of the enemy. His word trumps the voice of secular philosophy. His word trumps society. His word is the ultimate authority. And then the enemy, he does continue to speak to us. The enemy, you see, he's, he's like, kind of like on Spotify. How many of you got a Spotify account? How many of you got Pandora? How many of you just got the vinyl records? Praise God. You just hang it in there with your CD player, right? Amen. God bless you. The devil's on, he's almost like he's on Spotify. He's got a playlist. Oh, he's got a playlist that he tries to get you to listen to. And every song and every track he's got on there, he's telling you things that you know in the side of your spirit's not right. And you know in the heart of your hearts that it's not correct. But he tell you things like there's no hope for you. That you'll always be bound. That you'll never be used by God. That you've made too many mistakes. That you don't have what it takes. But today I've stepped to this platform today to declare a word that trumps all those other words. There is another message. There is another sound. There is another voice that's speaking in this atmosphere today. And I want to tell you, it's the word of the king. And the word of the king trumps all the other voices. Oh, come on, if you know that to be true, why don't you just say amen to that? That his word trumps all the other voices. It trumps all the other messages. I, I want to do what the king says. I want to hear what the king is saying today. Ecclesiastes 8.4 says it like this. That where the word of a king is, there is power. There is power where a word of a king is. I want to tell you today that we're not here today trying to do something in the flesh. We're not here today to try and rely on our wisdom, our education, and we're thankful for all of that. But can I tell you today the only hope for the world is not my wisdom, is not my education, is not my skill set, but the only hope for the world today is the power of the word of the king. That's the only power we have. That's the only hope we have. This is the power above all powers. This word declares that though you may be bound, you can be set free today. That though you may have been raised in that sin and may have been raised with those chains and shackles, there's a word here today that can break every bondage, that can break every fetter, that can break every chain of sin in the world. And it's the word of the king. Oh, can you hear it today? Because where the word of a king is, there is power. I've come to tell you there's power flowing through this house today. Why do you get excited like you do, Brother Thomas? I'll tell you. Because there's power moving in this atmosphere. There's power to change lives. God is meeting people. God is meeting people's faith. God's joining himself. And he's getting ready to show what the word of a king can do. Where the word of a king is. There is power. And who may say to him, what doest thou? In other words, when the king opens his mouth. 
He begins to speak and utter, Brother Jim, in our life. There's nobody that can interrupt him. When he begins to speak and say, you're healed, there's nobody that can interrupt him. When he begins to speak and say, your mental health is now healthy. When he begins to speak to your emotions and say, they're now repair. When he begins to speak to your body. When he begins to speak to your marriage. I wish I had somebody that believed the word of the Lord today. And I believe you do. But when he begins to speak salvation to you. When he begins to speak deliverance. There's nobody that can interrupt the king. Why? Because where the word of a king is. There's power. And nobody's going to interrupt our king. So if he started speaking in your life, the devil may try to interrupt. The world may try to interrupt. But when he starts speaking, nobody can question him. Nobody can interrupt him. And I'm thankful for what the Lord is speaking over New Life Church. I'm thankful for what the Lord is speaking over your life and your life and your family and your ministry. The Lord is speaking today. Can you hear the word of the king? It's here today. And he's telling you, I've got power. Oh, I've got power that can even shake your wilderness. I'm preaching to somebody today right now. You are in a wilderness. You're in a dry, desert place. You are thirsty. Your soul is longing for something that the world cannot feel. I want to tell you that the word of the Lord can come right to where you are today. And he can reach you even in the middle of your bondage and your addiction. He can reach you even in the place of your thirst and your hungering. Oh, it's in the wilderness where he said in Psalms 29, 8, that the voice of the Lord will shake the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. It doesn't matter how long it's been. It doesn't matter how dry and thirsty you are. I want to tell you the Lord can come to your thirst. The Lord can come to your wilderness. The Lord can come to your barren and land and begin to shake it right now with the word of his mouth. Oh, it's been a long time. It doesn't matter. Brother Thomas says, I've been looking for answers and I've been trying to get out of this and everybody's given up. It doesn't matter. The word of the king is coming to somebody's wilderness today. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. The Lord is coming. There's a voice in the wilderness right now and it's the voice of the Lord and he's shaking somebody's wilderness. He's shaking you. He's waking you up saying, I want to do a miracle in your wilderness. In your wilderness, Brother Sarfaz. Last week, we concluded a three-week series about God coming to Egypt and getting his people out. We learned how God redeemed them by the blood of the Lamb. I'm not going to re-preach it. God had them follow a cloud, a cloud into the wilderness. And then he began to show them the promised land. We learned about that, but do you guys remember that Israel took a wrong turn in the wilderness? Remember they were supposed to go into the promise but they, like us, a lot of times, took the wrong turn. I don't know about you, but I've made some mistakes in my life. I've made some mistakes that I wish I would have chosen a different path, but I turned the wrong way. Oh, there's a way that seems right. But when we get down that path, we realize, no, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I, I really wanted. And some of you have taken the wrong path. And like Israel, you've taken the wrong way. And maybe I'm preaching to somebody on live stream. I pray that if you're on live stream or you're in this house today, I pray you hear the word of the Lord. That you may have made a mistake. You may have made a wrong turn. But there's even a word for you today. There's even a word for anybody in this house that you've ever made a mistake. And you've ever sinned. And you've ever messed up. And you've ever tainted your testimony. No, there's a word for everybody today whether you've got a clean track record and none of us really do but you think you might do or you're here today and you say no I've got a rap sheet I I've done some things I'm known in the community my reputation is bad I want to tell you there's a word for you there's a word coming to your wilderness there's a word coming to you there's a word coming to you. Let's see that verse again, Brother David, or whoever's running media, Sister Peyton. He said, he said, I will send my word. Psalms 29, 8. My voice shaketh the wilderness. But not just any wilderness. Do you see that? Some of you are like, no, you're standing in front of the screen. Sorry. Do you see that? <laughs> shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. Oh. Remember Kadesh Barnea? 
Last week we learned that's where Israel came to the border of the promised land. They were standing in Kadesh Barnea and they decided that they wanted to go to the wrong direction and they wandered for 40 years and 40 years they lost time and they lost ministry and they lost uh, an encounter with God for 40 years. They made a wrong turn. But he noticed where he said, I'm going to send my word. He said, in the place where you got it wrong, and the place where things went south, and the place where you just messed up my plan, I'm even going to send my word, and it's going to shake the wilderness of your mistake. It's going to shake your mistake. It's going to shake your failure. It's going to shake your wrong path, and I'm going to pull you back onto the right path. Why? Because where the word of a king is, there is power. Oh, aren't you thankful for that? Let's thank him for that. That there's no sin. There's no mistake that I can ever do where his voice and his word can ever reach me. That's why Sister Ginger, the, the prodigal in the, the pig pen, had lived riotous living. Surrounded by superficial, artificial, shallow people who said, I'm your friend. But when the money ran out, where were they? Oh, they left him in a pig pen and said, you figure it out. We're on to the next victim. And he's sitting there in the pig pen. He's sitting there in the muck and the mire. He's made a mistake. But then a thought comes to him. I believe it was a God-ordained thought. Because see, there was a father somewhere praying about his prodigal son. Saying, you made a mess up of your life. But go to him. Let the Spirit of the Lord go. I I'm preaching to some people in this room right now. You've got loved ones and friends who have walked away from God. You've got sons and daughters who became prodigal sons and daughters. But I want to remind you today that the word of the Lord is not scared to get down in the middle of the pig pen with them and say, no, there's a place for you in your father's house. No, why don't you get up out of this mire? Why don't you get up out of your mistake and go back to New Life Church? Go back to the house of the Lord. Go back to the body of believers who love you. Because the word, the word is reaching. The word is reaching today. The city we read about in our text find themselves in a very perplexing situation. You see, as I shared with you, they were about to be invaded by an enemy. An enemy came to their door. An enemy began to knock on the front door of their city. Anybody there? Open up. They didn't have a ring doorbell back then. They sent somebody to the front door of that city and he opens up that grand door. He says, who are you and what do you want? They have good manners in the city. Who are you and what do you want? The Ammonite king began to tell them, we're here to take your city. We're here to take everything from you. We're here to leave you in ruin. You see, these people who were knocking on the door of the city, they weren't nice neighbors. Everybody said they weren't nice. Smile at me and say they weren't nice. How many of you ever had any not nice neighbors? Oh, we had show of hands on that one. Okay, here we go. Oh, they, 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 they weren't the nice neighbors. Man, there's a lot of stories going through my mind right now, but I'm just going to move on. They, they, they weren't nice neighbors. They weren't knocking on the door to borrow a cup of sugar or some tea. No, no, no. They were there to try and take some things from them. Maybe some of you... There's been some enemies knocking on the door of your heart trying to take some things from you and trying to subtract some things from your life. He's knocking on the door, but I'm going to tell you right now, you do not have to settle for the enemy and his terms. You don't have to give one inch. You don't have to give him anything. But Israel, Israel got scared. They said, what are we going to do about this? Because, see, these people were horrible. They actually were the... The great-great-grandchildren of Lot. You guys remember Lot? Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot even tried to offer his own family to appease the sin of the city. And God decided, no, that's not what you're going to do. We're going to get you out of this city. And, and then Lot, they had, let's just say they had some serious family issues come up. And, and then there was a, a nation born known as the Ammonites. This is them. Oh, you know how they worshiped their God? They would sacrifice their own children in fire. That's the people. Oh, they were the people, by the way, did I mention that they were banned from going to the temple, the house of the Lord, up to ten generations because of their sin and because of their wrong. And now they're knocking on the door. And they're saying, we're about to take everything you have. 
We're about to take your testimony. Oh, I know you think you're a child of God. Oh, I know you think you're called. Oh, I know you think that God's got something for you, but we're here to take everything out of your hands. We're the Ammonites. Give it to us. Israel did not know what to do. They didn't know what to do, so they said, well, would you make a deal with us? Can we work this out some way? Can I buy you dinner and then buy you some Krispy Kreme? And he thought about it, and he said, no. He said, well, what do you want from us? Can you work a deal out with us? And that king, that evil king, that Ammonite king, it was almost like he was raiding for this moment because he replies back to them, oh, I'll make a deal with you. I'll make a deal with you. I'll let you live, but you can live as my slave. I'll let you live, but you're going to be our servants forever. Sure, we'll work it out. I'll let you live if you'll just pluck out your right eye and give it to me. How gruesome a request, but that's how gruesome the enemy that we're dealing with today is. The enemy of our soul, the enemy of our spirit right now is asking some things from us that we would be appalled to learn what he's trying to get from us. I'm not trying to be insensitive to anybody if you're injured or you have a disability in your vision today, but how gruesome to ask for the right eye of an entire city. But then somebody began to think, well, you know, in the grand scheme of things, one eye is not that bad. One eye, I can live without it. Amazon has eye patches, and we can navigate this. We can get through this. And they begin to really consider this, Brother Mark. They begin to wonder, can we live this way? Can, can, we, can we get by with this? Oh, oh, it's just one eye. It's just one thing that I'll be given the enemy. It's just one prayer request that, that I'm discouraged about and I'm just going to give up on. It's just one coworker that I've been witnessing to. Uh, or, or maybe that's, that's a, a boundary that's in my life or a conviction in my life. It's just one thing that the enemy wants from me. Why, why not? Anybody ever had the devil talk to you this way or the world talk to you this way? Just, it's not a big deal. Oh, you know how many people are killed every year by nature? I would love to tell you that, you know, you got to look out for the lions, the tigers, and bears. Oh, my. And you do, and you need to. But they're not the most deadly creatures on earth. You know what creature on earth kills more people than the lions, tigers, and bears combined? The mosquito, it's small, it's insignificant, it's light, it lands on you, you don't even know it's there, and you kind of swish it away, but it's done its damage because it's planted something in your body. And I want to tell you today that the enemy will try to plant thoughts in our minds that begin to undermine what God wants to do for us. The enemy will try to tell us, like we heard today, the stoic thought of belief that things are just how they are and we should just leave them alone, that things are never going to change. No, I've come to tell you that there is a creator in this room and there's a master in this room that he's ready to change us. He's not going to leave us how he found us. He's not going to leave us the same way. No, no, no. He changes everything he touches. Oh, just the right eye. But the right eye would cause them to be weak. You see, they were right-handed warriors. Do your study. Without the right eye, you're not deadly on the battlefield anymore. You can't see over or around your shield to strike a blow, and all you can do is cower behind your shield. Or if you're an archer, you're right-handed, you're going to draw the bowstring back, and what are you going to aim with? Which eye? The right eye. Oh, if you're a master of jab. Throw it. What eye are you going to use if you're right-handed? Use the right. So you knew what he was doing. He was rendering Israel useless on the battlefield. Well, we're still alive. Yeah, but what are you living for? Well, we're still breathing. That's good. But what are you breathing for? Uh, we're, we, we've got our, we're slaves. We're servants to, to this king, this enemy king. But if you're living a life where you're not living how you want to live and you're not living in liberty and freedom, then you're not really living a life that God intended. I want to tell you, God intended for you and I to have absolute freedom over everything. 
where I don't have to do certain things. I don't have to be addicted to this. I, I don't have to go this certain way. Just because my grandparents or my parents, I don't have to do that. No, we serve a God who says, you know what? I can change your situation. I can change what the enemy is telling you, and I can bring you out, and it can be done by the word of the Lord today. And his word is in this room working right now. In the name of Jesus, I feel the word of the Lord. I feel God moving on hearts. Come on, if you want to respond, we're going to take a moment. Remember, we're going to be a church that just follows the cloud. I feel the cloud trying to settle in here right now. If I've been preaching to you and God has been pulling to you through his word, I want to tell you we don't have to go another step further, but you and God can start talking. You and God, you can start praying right now. God can start changing that situation right now. You don't have to settle for good enough. You don't have to settle for a maimed, mediocre, half-vision life. But no, he said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. People of the city are gathered. Somebody raises their hand. Says, guys, I know I know that you said that the king wants our right eye. That enemy king has told us how we've got to live. That enemy has told us that we have no choice, that our family lived this way, or that maybe our grandparents lived this way, he's told some of you. I know that's what we've heard, that we have no choice in the, in the matter. We have no say so. But somebody lifted their hand and said, I know he said that. But have any of you went to the king? Have any of you asked the king? what he thinks about this. Wow, what an idea. Mind blown. Let's go ask the king. Brother Andy, help me out. So they said, okay, we're going to ask the king. We're going to send a messenger. Brother Bowen, do you mind helping me? You want to be a, come on. You want to be a messenger today? All right. King, get up there, bro. What are you doing? The king. Somebody said, have we asked the king? They hadn't asked the king. So they said, you know what? We're going to get a messenger. And we're going to send that messenger to run to the king. Why don't you run around this church right now? There's some people who need to wake up right now. Go, go. Get him, get him. Get him, get him, get him. Wake him up. He began to run to the king. Go ahead, bro. And he began to conversate with the king and said, Oh, king, we're in a dire situation. The enemy has told us that we have to live a certain way. The enemy has told us that we're going to be his slaves, that we have to live in bondage. And King, we were just wondering, do you have anything to say about this? Do you have a word that you would like to say over this situation? And the king looks at the messenger and says, actually, I have a few things to say about it. He said, I, he pointed his finger in his face and he said, I want you to go back to that city. Hmm. Almost like he's done that before, Sister Diana. Maybe to a sibling or two. He pointed his finger in that messenger's face and said, I want you to go back to that city and I want you. Where's your finger, bro? Come on, come on. I want you to go back to that city. You keep that finger up. I want you to go back to that city and I want you to tell that city that it does not have to be how the enemy has told them it's going to be. That they don't have to settle for any I wish somebody received the word of the Lord right now. That you don't have to settle for anything that the enemy has told you you got to settle for. You can have a way out. He said you go get, he gave them his, my goodness, think about it. He gave them his word. He gave it to the messenger, and the messenger said, I am on it. And he took off running, and he ran back to that city. Come on, you sit down. He ran back to that city. He had a word. He had a message. It wasn't his word. It wasn't his message coming down that dusty road, but it was the word of a king. Here sits the city in despair, but they look up and say, wait a minute. I think I hear a messenger telling me a different tune. 
I think I hear a messenger telling me something that the king has said this morning. I think I can hear another word from the king. I've come to tell somebody today that the Lord is speaking a better word over your life, that the word is speaking a better life over your ministry, that the Lord says it's not over yet, that there is still hope, there is still life, and you don't have to give in to what the enemy has told you. You've got to give in. No, there's a word of the king in this room right now. Oh, let's rejoice in that right now. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Let's stand to our feet. I'm done preaching. I'm done preaching. I'm done preaching. But there's a word for somebody in this room right now. Come on, God is drawing you right now like a magnet to metal. God is pulling you in. There's a word that has been spoken. There's a word that's trying to take root in somebody's heart right now. Oh, it is the seed of the word of the Lord. Amen, amen. There is a work that God is doing in our midst. There is a work that God is doing in the people who are connected with this church. Oh, God has heard prayers. God has heard petitions. I want to tell you, God has heard your cry. They sent the word to that King Saul, and he sent his word to them and said, it's going to be all right. I want to tell somebody right now, God is letting you know it's going to be all right. Come on, that there is an answer, that there is hope, that there is a turnaround for you and I today. And so what we're going to do right now is anytime there is good news, and anytime there is a word from God that comes down and meets a church like it has today, there should be room for people to respond to it. There should be room for people to take that word and by faith grab hold of it and say, I'm going to apply this to my tomorrow. I'm going to apply this to my future. I don't believe that it's over yet. Is there anybody here today that you want to pray and you want to express your faith today. And you want to receive what the Lord has. I feel some joy and I feel some triumph in this room right now. And I feel like the Lord wants to meet somebody who will just kind of reach out right now in your praying and in your petition and say, God, I want your word. I want your deliverance. I want your promise today. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's respond now. However you respond, amen. But let's respond with prayer. And let's begin to say words to God. Come on, open up your emotions. O open up your heart to the best of your ability. We're going to open these altars. If you want to come and pray with us, we invite anybody who wants to pray. You can come down front and you can pray with the members of New Life Church. And if you're a guest, we want you to feel welcome and comfortable. But I want you to know that God is here today. And God is meeting some people in this room right now. Oh, look at the faith here. Look at the responses here. In the name of Jesus. Come on, the word of the King. The King of kings. And the Lord of lords. When he speaks, fear has to leave. Doubt has to get out of the room. Sickness has to go away. Bondage has to be broken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Let's respond to him. Oh, what a beautiful prayer service we're entering. Come on, this is where we pray. This is where we respond. This is where we let the Lord speak. This is where we let the Lord operate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, come on, that's it. We're a family. Come on, we're in this together. Come on, we're walking this road together. That's it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
One word from you, it changes everything. And when you speak, one word from you, mountains have to move. When you speak, one word. so thankful. I'm so thankful that the Lord meets with us like this. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a deep touch in this atmosphere right now. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Heart, soul, mind, and 
<laughs> oh, let's thank the Lord for that word, that confirmation today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let's let out a shout of praise right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We will never be the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Go, go in that word this week and receive that word this week. Amen. Amen. I look across this room Sunday after Sunday, Brother Jeremiah, and I see people who bring, open, bring up the open book of their life, and they bring it to God. And Some of them have unfinished chapters. And some of us have written the end. But week after week, we see God get out his pen. And says, no, I'm having a better word for you. I'm going to write something better. I'm going to write a new story for you. Amen. Aren't you thankful for new life today? <laughs> new life today. I'm not going to dismiss you. I'm just going to say, go in Jesus' name. Walk in this this week. This is who you are, what you are. You are who and what the king says you are. Oh, and New Life Church, we're now entering the mission field. We now get to live out what we have received today. Don't forget that the Spanish ministry fundraiser is taking place in the basement immediately afterwards. You're, everyone is welcome to join us. That is a fundraiser. Amen. But God bless you. We hope to see you very soon.